So guess what? I think it's bibster time. I'm gonna try to work on this thing, get a video done. It is hot. I mean, hot out here. So I think what I'm gonna do, I got one fan in the window. I think I'm gonna go buy another fan and uh, maybe it'll keep me from overheating. But it's gonna work. It's gonna help a little bit at least. And I think in the new shop, I may use that fan as like a ridge vent, to suck all the heat out of the top of it. So here's the deal. Uh, this whole video is gonna be a break video. Back probably like the last video I did on this thing, which has been a little while. Um, I was looking for some rear, some rear, some rear calipers for this thing. So the rear end that's ooh. I don't really want to spill that. So the rear end that's on this thing is out of like a '95. 95 Mustang, um, had the brackets for the rear disc already. It actually had calipers on it for rear disc as well, but as you can see, they're not the best of shape. Um, so what I was doing is I was kind of just, well not only that, the, yeah, they just, they just weren't in very good shape. Needed pads, uh, the calipers themselves weren't very good, so I kind of put a feeler out there on the channel uh, if anybody had any rear calipers. Actually, I lied. That's not what happened. I was going to use these rear calipers and somehow 
when I disassembled the donor car, I lost the front calipers. So I didn't have any Mustang front calipers. I was gonna use these, didn't have any fronts. So I put a feeler out and said, hey look, does anybody have any stock calipers for, I don't know, 89 Mustang um, that they'd be willing to send me? And, you know, I just figured I'd get a use set off somebody's car or whatnot. And uh, Ray Bestis hit me up and said, hey man, we'd love to help you out on the Bibster build. Tell us what you need. Actually, don't even tell us what you need. Go to the website, breakpartsinc.com. Pick out all the things you need. Let us know. We'll send them to you. And, um, you know, we'll basically sponsor, sponsor the video, sponsor the channel, whatnot. So thanks, Ray Bestis. Uh, lifesaver there. Got a whole pile of Ray Bestis stuff over here. And so, long story short, the Bibster is going to have front to back all new Ray Bestis parts. Um, front disc, rear discs, front calipers, rear calipers, all new pads, uh, lines. What else did they send me? Um, everything. Everything I needed, they sent me. So, yeah, we got Ray Bestis on board. So all new stuff, but this was the deal too. So I got all that stuff new. I was like, all right, well, I got to make this look really nice. I hit up Eastwood. I said, e you know, Eastwood, I got, this is what I'm doing. Ray Best is going to sponsor a video. Um, I would love to coat all these calipers before they go on the car. That way it don't rust and look nice and clean and shiny. And, you know, you're going to see all this stuff. There's not going to be anything covering it up. And so I want it to look good. So then Eastwood stepped up, sent everything that we need to coat these calipers. And so... Right now, that's what I want to do. As you can see, rotors, all new calipers. So these are the rear rotors here. These are the front calipers. Those are the front rotors. And a little tidbit, if you want to do a five lug conversion on your Fox body, that is the part number for the brake rotor. It's just a factory deal. Just go right on brakepartsinc.com, put in that part number, and uh, that is the five lug conversion brake rotor for a Fox. So then, like I said, all the calipers, and they sent me lines. I think that's what that is. And here's the lines here. So all the lines front and rear and then what is this oh the cables for the emergency brake so we got the two cables got all the lines all new brake pads and then Eastwood sent pre-painting prep cans so we're gonna clean the brake rotors with this, brake calipers with this stuff, several cans of that, and your high temp caliper paint. So it's like a, it's a mixed two in one, it's a four in one mix, um, urethane activator. So we'll mix these up. I just got it in, I believe it's gloss black if I remember correctly. And then they were nice enough to you to send me mixing cups and applicator applicator sponges everything i need for the bibster all brand new stuff courtesy of ray bestus and eastwood always appreciate the support oh one other thing i got that i haven't shown you so i went on uh, i believe i got these on jigs so these are little brake uh brake hose tabs come with the little retainer clips and these are like weld on so I'll kind of notch these out weld them on the chassis where they need to go and that's where the brake lines off of the calipers will tie in and then I'll just hard line everything from there so I'll put two of those tabs on the rear end two of those tabs probably on the A arms up front actually won't be able to be on the A arm because the A arm it'll probably be just on the inside the A arm on the chassis up here so anyway, let's get these calipers coated and start putting this stuff on.
All right, so I got them pretty well painted, and uh, that's about the shininess that they'll be, because stuff's already tacked over. Not real sure how long it's gonna take for it to completely dry, but until then I can kind of show you um, how the lines will route and be held, which, I mean, it's not that hard to understand, but let me show you anyway. So I'm pretty sure that with the caliper in there, the brake line's gonna sit, I don't know, something about like that. So then these little tabs, this piece will actually slide through there. It doesn't fit now, I have to actually open these up. But it'll slide through there and then it'll have a retaining clip on the other side. It'll hold it. I'll just kind of notch this out to fit the tubing. I'll probably just mount it right here somewhere. And then obviously from here all the way to the mass cylinder itself will be hard lines to be attached to the frame. It's not, uh, not going to be a terribly complicated setup. Should look pretty good. The back will be pretty much the same thing. So while I'm waiting on the calipers to finish drying, I don't really have, can't really put them on. I don't really want to mount anything until all the calipers are placed. Um, I got to put new bearings and stuff in the rotors. So I'm not going to finish it up today. I'll probably finish it up tomorrow. I'll wait till those things dry up. Put everything, you know, kind of bust everything apart, put everything on, put all that stuff back together, and then I can kind of see where these lines are going to route. But while I was over here, I figured I'd show you something I'm going to add to the front of this thing. Um, one of the issues that we had found when we took this thing to Ponies in the Smokies was that um, the flex up here in was just more than we expected, which I'm not going to say it was more than I expected. I knew that potentially that could be an issue. That was probably one of the biggest issues I was worried about is this flex uh, in this way affecting the camber on this thing. I mean, when I was designing it, I had a bunch of ideas in mind of how I'd, I would remedy that. And, you know, one of them was actually like a bar that tied in here, went back through the, the firewall connected to this side, and that would kind of keep it from doing its thing. I thought about going down with it. I thought about straight crossbars. I thought about a little bit of everything, but the nature of this thing is I wanted everything to be adjustable and thus far it is I can adjust um, you know ride height with this thing I can adjust ride height with the hydraulic cylinders I can adjust caster and camber with the heim joints and making a bar that goes around the back would not be adjustable it kind of lock it down where it's at I could do something straight across put some heims on it it would be adjustable, but then the flex would travel from side to side. So in cornering, it would still flex these. It just flex them side to side because everything's solid. And so really what needs to happen is these things need to be tied into the chassis in some form or fashion. And what I think I came up with is I'm going to do some plates on the front of the cylinder heads. And then I've got some... I think these are one inch bolt himes for one inch chromoly tube. Something like this. So these will slide in. And on one side it'll attach the cylinder head, and on the other side it'll attach out here on this strut tower itself. And then, you know, one's a right handed thread, the other one's a left handed thread. I can twist that thing and tighten it up, loosen it up, and it won't go side to side because the engine's solid mounted. The engine itself will actually become part of the chassis. The other thing too that I found was that I didn't like this mounting uh, setup that I had for the turbo itself. It kind of had too much flex with the chassis versus the engine. And I also wanted to be able to take the engine, transmission, turbo, the headers, all the, all the tubing. I wanted all that stuff to stay together and be able to slide the entire thing out of the car if I needed to without taking anything apart. So I think what I'm going to do is with these plates, they're going to be on the cylinder heads. I'll also bring off some 
one inch tubing that's gonna come down and will tie into the bottom of this turbo mount down here. And then that way it's all one piece. It's not attached to the chassis. It won't flex. It'll have, you know, be mounted to the engine itself so it'll kind of match vibrations and less prone to cracking exhaust headers and tubing, uh, intake tubing. And then like I said, I can literally unbolt the motor mounts, unbolt the transmission mount, and not take anything else loose and the whole thing will slide right out. So there you go. Not really a fabrication in this video. Just want to kind of give you an update of what's going on. We'll get back to the brakes, get all that stuff done. Start working on some of this stuff. I think what I want to start doing is instead of like doing a ton of recording and making these videos where I get a ton done, which take usually like a week worth of work and recording to do one video, I'm just gonna start pumping out videos. So if I just get this much done, that's what you're gonna get. And then that way we can kind of go step by step through this build all the way till the end. So we'll get all the brakes tidy up on this thing, get all that stuff mounted, start working on some of this front stuff, get these plates made, start tying in this turbo. We should be able to get to that this week. I also have some more Fronius videos coming for you. I'm gonna cover this machine back here. I wanna do another full length video on the TIG machine too, so stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, Bibster baby. Be sure to drop you some links to Ray Bestis and Eastwood. Y'all go check them out. The uh, Ray Bestis site's pretty cool. You can kind of go through and see every part, every part number. Really, you can just kind of look for anything you might need for your vehicle. It doesn't have to be a Mustang, it could be anything.